Venezuela for me is a treasure trove of precious memories. It's the taste of empanada de queso paired with a malta. Or even better, it's a creamy chicha with a warm pastelito. Of course, a pastelito, Nina. It's knowing that every weekend you could hike to Sabas Nieves and reward yourself with those delicious cocadas. Venezuela is family, it's unity, it's endless thrill of discovering hidden gems in the land of rich with beauty and culture. But then, it's also the anxiety that followed the sound of the breaking news on Globovision. The heartbreak of seeing one of the biggest TV channels shut down due to the law called La Ley Resorte. A name that ironically means spring, but feel more like a chakra. It's the fear of crime. The painful reality of families torn apart as loved ones live in search of a better future abroad. More than 7 million Venezuelans has left their home country in 2024, seeking refuge and hope in foreign lands. Just here in the UK, that we're quite far away from Venezuela, the Venezuelan community has grown significantly, now numbering more than 30,000 people according to the Office for National Statistics the UK. But today, we gather to witness the Venezuelan general elections of 2024. There's a glimmer of hope that things can change. Today is not just another day. It's a day of breaking the chains of this dictatorship, of challenging oppression, of remembering that our strength is in our unity. And it's a day for the world to see what it truly means to be a Venezuelan hopeful and unbreakable. Let's show the world our spirit, our culture, our wavering faith in a better future. Today we vote for hope, for change, for Venezuela. Hi everyone, my name is Lele and you're subscribed, that's wonderful. Today we are in the Venezuelan elections and I just met this guy that he's explaining that basically he has a movie and it's on Netflix. So can you please say your name, where are you from and can you explain the name of the movie? Alright, my name is Ivan Souza. Second show. The first time we were stopped by the national anthem and obviously it was quite complicated, but why he's such an important personality right now? Because he has a strong message that you need to listen. Yes, I was trying to say before because as you can see there's lots of people cheering up for Venezuela and my name is Ivan Souza, I'm 29 years old, from Brazil and we from Brazil, we, we are with the Venezuelan and uh, not just Brazil but the whole world is with Venezuela because we want a democracy so even though the whole world doesn't much sometimes doesn't know about Venezuela or Brazil they mind because uh, uh, this way of, uh, of government of uh, dicta dictatorship it's horrible and then we just have like uh, Venezuela which is going to stop today have uh, North Korea what else we have uh, Cuba China, you know, and it, it cannot grow, it cannot grow. So today is the day for change of Venezuela. I believe that. All right, so you actually have this message or you have these thoughts because you created or you were involved in a film yeah. that it spread this message. What did you do on that film and what's the name of it? Yes, so my position in the film was uh, like my, my other Christians uh, brother, I would say Christians, brothers and sisters, is that we invest in the, in the, in the word of God to, to, uh, pray, to say this, this teaching about the faith and spiritually, because if you have faith, we have hope, and if you have the hope, then we can move everything. For example, all these people here, they have hope for change. And the name of the movie is called Nothing to Lose, which is Nada Perder, Netflix. Then, this movie Nothing to Lose from Brazil, because there is two types of Nothing to Lose, but this one from Brazil, it's a 
faith and spiritually and it tells a, a story of a, how resilient it was it was based on a real life story of a fifth, almost 50 years ago and I, I suggest for all of you to have a look on Netflix Nada Perder, Nothing to Lose, Brazil What's your name? Where are you from? The city and how long have you been in the UK? Hi, hello, my name is Trina Ponte. I am from Venezuela, Caracas. I have five more. Yeah, I can know. My name is Mauricio Nunes. I'm from Caracas. And I've been coming and going since 2017. My name is Elder News. Uh, I am the father of Mauricio News. Uh, I live in Aldershot, Hampshire. We live in Aldershot, Hampshire, which is 58 minutes driving from, from, from London since 2016. What are you doing here today? My name is Isabella Bulgaroni. I'm from Venezuela, Maracay, and we are here in London supporting the Venezuelan elections. We are seeking for a fair elections, for a fair parliament, for a fair um, political parties to win the elections. We are supporting Maria Corina. We are voting and a big, big step in our second or third round to the freedom, to get freedom. I can feel like if you put your ears on the ground, then you feel there is a horde of big, big elephant and horses crumbling the earth. There is a big movement to the freedom in Venezuela. So that's a big step for the liberty of our country or our people. So we've been living here nearly eight to nine years without the possibility to vote. And this is the first step. It was very difficult to get the opportunity to vote. My son and my daughter-in-law registered and they couldn't vote as, after all to vote. I just, it was very straightforward. Only, only two minutes, three minutes of the queue. And then finally we get the opportunity to vote. I'm very happy to, because I love Venezuela. What is the difference between this election and the previous election? And when was the last general election in Venezuela. I was in Venezuela in 2016 and before that I, we were involved in all the elections but not in the United Kingdom. Previously we haven't had any opportunity to vote. There's no possibility to register and even, even to vote. So now we have that opportunity today to vote that this beautiful day. And I feel that the main difference is that there's so much hope, there's so much enthusiasm by all of us to get finally a change that we've been looking for for so long. Uh, so yeah, we're very, very thrilled, very happy, very nervous, very anxious to finally get a freedom to our country, finally be heard, be seen by the international community. Basically, um, the difference between the previous election that this now is the feelings of the people now. The people want a big change because we want a different country we want a uh, you know the best things of the of the life so it's very important for us this election because it's the moment for change that our country venezuela <laughs> apparently you are one of the not many venezuelans that had the opportunity to vote this time because of the registration can you tell me step by step what did you do to register yourself and stay here and vote today? Okay, this is a great question because we basically came yeah. uh, second, third day since the um, registration opened. Correct. We brought sent, our yeah, we proof of all, address, all and our documents, and the others. All the documents, but, everything yeah. was fine, perfectly fine. A few <laughs> weeks later, I received an email which I, I received it in my spam folder and I didn't see it. For they the couldn't place. validate our address. And right after I saw the email, they, the registration was already closed, so we couldn't do anything about it. I tried to email the consulate. Correct. And they basically said that there was no chance for us to vote because, um, yeah, the registration was already closed. I for believe example, it started at uh, the beginning of April. Yeah. And um, it closed mid-April, I think, 16th of April. Uh, May, May, end of May and then middle of April, I think. What did you learn about the process? Well, social media, everywhere. I was very looking forward to it. I'm 24 years old and I've been wanting to vote all my life. I've been wanting to uh, be heard, Correct. be seen, be trying, you know, I, I don't know any other government that's not this. I want to change in my country. Uh, I was all the time, every single day of my life, I check all the news in Venezuela. So I check on the videos, the YouTube videos and all the news about the open registration, the consulate. 
So my son also told me about about their opening the registration of the CNE, CNE. But it's very sad, it's very unfortunate that nearly 8 million people around the world was registered, wanted to vote, and it only 66,000 people is allowed to vote today. So that's a very, very unfortunate that situation because there were a lot of people that, if my son and my daughter-in-law, they wanted to vote, and they were making it very, very difficult to, and they're trying to avoid people voting, which is, which is against the civil rights to vote, which is a one, one of the civil rights to vote. Now, last, uh, can you please say a message for everyone? Well, I have many, many friends, many people that said, oh, I mean, this government can't can leave the office um, on, by, by the voting system. We know we are in a very, very skewed situation in favor of the government, but uh, we, we have to do everything. We have to do all the steps. So if we don't do anything, they are still in power. So we need to do it, these small changes. It's like the small changes that were made in South Africa with Nelson Mandela, with many, many leaders. That is a step by step where this kind of process is start changing the, in, a, in a new age. It's really important for me to tell you that Venezuelan vibe is unique. This is my first time in another country and it's very hard for me because I miss my mom, I miss my family, I miss my, my friends in general. So one thing that I learned in other country is it's beautiful, the world entire is beautiful, but Venezuela is unique. My message for everyone is to just go vote. Don't lose your hope. Make your voice heard. We try go vote and seek for a change that we've been looking for for so long. Venezuela, I love you so much. Okay. We are Venezuela. Que esto llegue hasta Venezuela, que la gente que está allá, no me quiero conmover, que la gente que está haciendo cola, que está allá, sepa que estamos con ellos. Bueno, Jesús dijo que donde dos o tres se reúnen en mi nombre, yo estaré allí en medio de ellos. Eso es lo que estoy sintiendo. Bueno. Hello, my name is Domingo Lapadula, and I'm the coordinator for CEPEX, which is an entity that we created in 2012 to help organize some of the primaries and the opposition here in London. The system might be a little bit closer to the concept that we have in the US that is a presidential election, although over there, there are four, they run for four years in Venezuela, they run for six years, there is also or, or used to be a Congress that, that right now is not working. That's the main difference with the system in the UK that you vote for your MP. How many candidates do we have for Venezuela and why do we have this quantity? At least with your opinion. Okay, Th there are two main reasons. One is a little bit on the, on, on the history. Of, sorry, let me go to the main question is the how many? I think it's 13, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's th 13 candidates that we have. Out of which really is about oh, Maduro and uh, Edmundo Gonzalez. And uh, why do we have that such a variety? First of all, it's just, just trying to put a lot of people on the, on, the, on, on the ballot to create confusion and di dilute the effect of the vote from the opposition. And it's not only a, a thing of quantity, it's also a thing that the government for several years have been taking judicial control of our long-standing uh, parties to try to put that control them and also that, to put candidates that are aligned to the government or at least to try to look like the opposition is still there, but it's not. And actually, I have a lot of people that come here and they are actually confused because they have voted for donkey's years about a, a, a party that in their minds is still 
an opposition party, a democratic party, but now it's just a hollow thing, an echelon, that has been taken over by the government to put someone that doesn't represent the, the ideals of that original party. So, do you believe that we are in a dictatorship? And why do you think that? If you can say that, good. If you cannot talk about that, you can also say that. I can say it very clear. And I will, uh, I, and I, and I will go first of all to two little examples. Well, it is not so little. First of all, we had a primary here. Well, globally, if uh, we organize uh, in, in, in all the countries that we are represented, a primary for the opposition. And we elected Maria Corina Machado by 93%. So we are very clear on, on who we wanted to be in the ballot. Now, the government di didn't allow her to go on the ballot based on some spurious charges that haven't been demonstrated or legal. Okay, now she put someone to stand for her and they didn't allow that either without any explanation whatsoever. And then we took out someone that was already on the ballot and that's Edmundo Gonzalez. And, and, and he's, he has decided to, to, to give support to what Maria Corina is doing and that he is going to go with her people in unity with her. So that's one thing. The other thing, while this is happening, the government has been going strongly against everyone that is organizing everything on this election to the point that the, all the, the team of people organizing the, the campaign of Maria Corina Machado have been put to jail, have been kidnapped. Some of them are in the Argentinian embassy uh, uh, on asylum because the, 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 mm, the government is trying to control them. And also, when they go to different uh, towns and places, the government is going after people that give logistical support to them, like restaurants, like hotels, closing them up, putting them into jail. So that's a, that's a dictatorship. Fantastic. One more thing that I would like to know for the British community. There are many people that were trying to register, but the information is not clear. So can you explain, there is an impossibility to have more clear information, clearer information, and why do you think that is not clear the information outside for the Venezuelan community to just go and vote? Okay, it is a mixture of the information and just the capacity of doing so. So on the information side, information is pretty easy. You have a website, you put what the conditions are and what you have to do, and people go and follow that. So that's dead easy. If you try to find that, on the, the National Electoral Commission, you won't find that easy at all if you find any. But that, that's about the information. Now, the, the other problem is that they have done a couple of things. One is keep the register closed for a long time. And only in few occasions, they open in a very short window and that people don't know how to do, how to do it. But, and then the next step, is that particularly for people that are living outside Venezuela, like in, U in the UK, they need to demonstrate that they are legal in that country, which in, in the UK is not such an issue because most of the, it's very difficult to, to enter. But when you go to Colombia, Peru, Argentina, all those places where most of the uh, diaspora have been going into, and they're, yes, they are illegal. Does that mean that they should not be allowed to vote in Venezuela because they are not, not legal in those countries? That should not be the case. All right, now a message for the British community or the community around the world that is speaking English that can understand about Venezuelan situation and um, hope message, if you can leave. These elections are neither fair or just but they are transcendental. I mean, right now, the unity that has been demonstrated up to now, let's see whether the, the votes that we come here today are aligned to that, I expect so, um, means that the, our situation have changed our commitment and 
uh, focus as a group have changed quite a lot to the point that basically we could say now that the the leader of the chavismo is maria corina because she has come out and make connection to the people and people and believing on what she's trying to, to achieve but the important thing is that this is a very important election but there is a lot of ground to be covered a lot of negotiation to come out after this either if the government accepts if there is any um, victory from from the opposition or if they they don't accept that we have to see i can only count the votes in here i can tell you what they are after we have voted there i don't know in venezuela and we, we we will need to go through that pain of demonstrating whatever is is aligned to what the vote was let me put on, on a scenario that i don't believe will come but that we are very close or we lose the change is visible and that means the government is uh, ha has lost the control that they had for a long long year Okay, first of all, I would like to know what's your name, where are you from, the city, where are you from, and what are you doing here today? Okay, first of all, thank you for the interview. Second, my name is Esteban Gonzalez. I am a witness for the Unitary Platform, which is the political party that supports Maria Corina Machado and our presidential candidate, Edmundo Gonzalez. Um, basically, I'm here supervising in the electoral pool that uh, everything goes according to procedure. And if there's any issues, I'm supposed to report that and obviously correct it wherever possible. Oh, I forgot to say, I am from Maracay in Venezuela, but I live in Bournemouth. One more thing, I would like to know, how can we vote? And what's the difference between the Venezuelan elections that you vote for the president and the British election that you, the British election that you have to vote for an MP? Well, first of all, the political system is completely different. In the United Kingdom, you have a parliamentary system, so you vote for a member of parliament, as you mentioned. And then the party that gets the majority, or if they don't, no one gets a majority, the coalition of parties that gets a majority in parliament, they can form a government and they can appoint a prime minister. Whilst in Venezuela, we have only, well, we have parliamentary elections and presidential elections. So whoever wins the election in the presidential ones, it doesn't matter with how many votes, as long as they have a majority, they get to be the president. Brilliant. Okay, so you are supporting Maria Karina and her supporter, which is Edmundo. Can you please tell me a bit about them? Yeah, so Maria Karina Machado, she has been a member of the Venezuelan parliament in the past. She has been in politics for a long time. However, although she won the primary elections organized by the opposition last year, the electoral tribunal, let's say, who is in practice controlled by the government, which is not legal, by the way. Uh, she was prohibited from running for office, so she cannot really compete. And therefore, the opposition has chosen to nominate Edmundo González Urrutia as a president of Venezuela, well, as a candidate. However, he doesn't really have a political background. In fact, he has been a diplomat in the past. He was a diplomat of Venezuela for over 20 years. He was our representative in the United Nations for a period of time. And I feel that is why people trust him, because where he has no political history, political background, he is like a completely neutral figure that is ideal to unite the country when we need it the most. He seems to be really competent and someone that really understands a lot about politics. Can you please explain if this dictatorship was not on the government right now, Will you be in Venezuela? Potentially, yes. I think that's a very personal question and everyone has the reasons to be here. But uh, for sure, there would not be 8 million Venezuelans outside of their country. And you have to bear in mind that many of these people have fled the country walking thousands and hundreds of thousands of kilometers to go to the United States illegally, which is a very dangerous journey, by the way, or down south to Colombia, Peru, Argentina, Brazil and Chile. Fantastic. Can you leave a message for everyone to understand uh, what's going on and probably a faith message? So I think this is the biggest chance that we've had to provoke the change that we all want in our hearts. And the best part is that it's happening in a peaceful way. 
so it is a matter of everyone recognizing whatever the result is but i think it is pretty obvious what it, what's going to be